All right, hi guys. We're here from Tennis Nerd Academy again, Nick and VJ, and today we're going to talk about how to deal with high balls. This is one of the most popular comments we get and questions. How do you deal with these? Uh, people get really frustrated because they lose a lot of matches when the ball kicks up and they don't know what to do. High ball backhand especially. Especially on the backhand side. The backhand side is usually the weakest stroke for most players. So, or if uh, you're just playing a moon baller in general. Yeah, there's a lot of moon ballers out there <laughs> right. and people hate moon ballers and then they are moon ballers themselves. <laughs> right. So it's pretty funny. That's how it works in tennis. Yeah. But uh, we hope you like this video and if you do, click like and subscribe to Tennis Nerd Content. More of this stuff to come. Uh, any comments and ideas you might have for new content, please put them down below and I wish you all a nice day. Hello guys, so today we are going to cover high balls on the backhand and how to deal with them. So first of all let me start off by saying like of course this is the most common problem for like most people you know. Also even at the professional level you can see like players are constantly trying to play heavy balls to the backhand of the other person because it's just a shot which is weak for almost like you can be a professional player or a hobby player when the ball gets high up here. It's just a very difficult shot to play. So the first thing uh, we are going to cover is like the take back. On the high ball it's really important you take your racket back high. So you're going to take the racket back as high as possible, especially depending on the height of the ball. Because uh, you want to be playing the shot from a position where your racket is up here and not going too much below. You start up, keep the racket up and the second most important thing is like how you want to play the ball. Now the most common mistake people make usually is to flatten the balls out like downwards you know especially from far back in the court if you try to flatten them down like uh, it's gonna lose a lot of speed after the bounce because unless you do it really perfect and hit it in the open court the other person is probably gonna reach the ball and that's gonna be like right in their comfort zone you know it's like a low ball which they reach and then they can swing at it again so I would recommend to either move back play it like high top spin so you quickly move back like three four steps if not, like you can also try to take the ball on the rise and try to play it like let's say you get the balls at a shoulder height and then just play it at the same height at which the ball is coming. So the important thing here is to not move your wrist like from the side I can show you. It's important to play through the ball. So you go here, you will see a lot of top players doing this. It's important to kind of like play the ball a bit like sideways. You know, you're not playing it like spin like this, but you are sliding through the ball. You will see a lot of top players actually doing this where they don't actually hit the ball straight but they kind of like slide through. Even the single hand backhand players, you can see Federer in many of his uh, slow motion videos. When the ball comes high, he hits it and there's actually a little bit of side spin on the balls. Now this is really difficult unless you actually practice it a lot but this would usually be the most efficient way of dealing with the high balls. In fact, you can see pretty much any of the top players. If you see their rackets in slow motion on the really high ball, it literally looks like they are slicing the ball because they put like so much of the side spin and uh, the ball goes pretty fast. It also like has a bit of spin on it. It slides after the bounce, you know, it skids a bit. So it's not so easy for the other person to just like be aggressive on your ball. Or like I said, you can play the safe option of quickly moving back and playing it high up again with like a lot of spin. But this one always puts you, of course, especially if you're playing someone really good, it puts you in a defensive position. So you have two options, be in a defensive position, move back, play it heavy spin and hope you can keep the opponent back in the court or you can try to play it through the ball where you are not flattening it down, like not completely flat, not lifting it on the rise here but you just play through the ball, little bit of side spin so the ball goes deep at least on the other side of the court. Okay, so those were the two options where you have uh, to move back and or uh, play the ball off the bounce but still at a fairly high position. What I'm going to be covering right now is uh, a more aggressive option for those of you who are looking to move to the net and finish the point rather quickly. So the first one that I'm going to be covering is uh, when the high ball is landing let's say fairly closer to the baseline or beyond what's called the no man's land. If you're positioned let's say close to the baseline and the ball's landing near the baseline or near the no man's land, what I would recommend is you to step inside close to the bounce and play the ball right after the bounce as it gets up. What you're looking for here is to not let the, let the ball bounce above your knee. You're trying to have the ball uh, being played at maximum your knee height. Right, so the way this works is you have to have a very shallow backswing. Let me show you from the side. A very shallow backswing. You move closer to the bounce. Let's say the bounce is an X, an imaginary X right here in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is I already assume myself moving close to the ball. I move close to the ball, have your knees bent a shallow backswing, not too deep because you don't want to get late. 
your eyes, your upper body has to be closer to the bounce because you want to make sure you center the ball well, shallow backswing and what you have to do is the moment the ball bounces, you got to say one and upon impact, you got to say two. So it's going to be like one, two, one and two. You don't want to make a big interval between the one and two. You want to have a very short interval between the one and two. That means that right after the bounce, you want to make the contact and not let that ball go any higher than your knee. This is gonna benefit you one because the explosive power from the ball can be contained. In your racket you can send the ball hurtling back faster and secondly if you're playing on a, on a clay court if there's a bad bounce because uh, you're playing the ball fairly close to the bounce that bad bounce is not gonna really uh, get into full effect so you won't have so much of a difference in the way the ball moves. You can catch it fairly quickly and send the ball back. Option number two of being aggressive is what the Williams sisters or James Blake have, or, or Roger Federer, sorry, how could I forget that, have made popular. And that is drive volley. And there's not much to be said about drive volley except you move in and try to catch the ball on its way down and just make a regular follow through on the ball. Of maybe, it may be a forehand, it may be a backhand. But you try to play the, the ball at, uh, let's say, between waist and shoulder, somewhere in between this, because this is like a comfort zone for 99% of the players. Drive the ball through and continue moving forward. The only thing you have to be careful about is that you want to be steady when you're making that, because too much of movement while making the, the drive ball you can lead to a miss hit because your vision is not steady. And that's one very important thing to look about. Now, one more reason why the backhand high ball is always so weak is because of course, it's a more sensible option also when the ball is really high on your backhand and you have a lot of time, mostly the right way to do is just run around and play it with your forehand. One, the forehand is a lot more powerful. Second, it's a lot easier handling the high balls with your forehand than rather with your backhand like this. Even if you have a better backhand, I would still recommend people to try and play more of these with the forehand because uh, the whole psychological pressure on the opponent is a lot more when you see someone preparing with like a big forehand, you know, rather than like you can have the greatest backhand but this doesn't just doesn't look as threatening as a forehand would look so this kind of even puts the opponent a bit more back they have to anticipate like more you know with the backhand it's pretty predictable where the next shot is coming in the training it's important to train a lot of high backhands because when you'll be playing someone who's better than you you won't have enough time mostly to actually run around and cover it with your forehand especially if they have a good kick serve you're pretty much gonna end up playing all of the balls here one more thing you can do is now is to make sure your contact point in the high ball is slightly like on the side. So in the lower ball you can hit it quite far in the front but in the high ball you don't want to hit it like all the way in the front because you lose out on a lot of energy then. You want to get it a little bit on the side and then push it all the way through you know. So let's see how it can be done on the court. So guys I'm gonna demonstrate some high balls now on the rise where I'm gonna let it come between my shoulder and the waist. Technique where I was taking them on the rise, I was still playing them slightly downwards, but usually you don't want to try to keep them a bit deep, you know, so the other person cannot be really aggressive. Of course, these were balls which were being fed from the bucket. When the ball is coming from the other side with a lot more spin, then even my ball is gonna go slightly deeper, you know. Just gonna show you how you can move back and play some spin balls. This option, of course, it's a bit more defensive. You have to have a bit fast leg that you can quickly move back and play it spin and deep. But it's a good, if you have like a heavy, good spin backhand, if you have fast arms, it's not necessarily defensive. You could play it like deep in the corner. But of course, like I said, you can select your shot depending on the situation you are in. So let's say you have your opponent far in the corner. On the defense, he plays with his forehand like a high ball to your backhand. Makes more sense than to take it on the rise and try to, you know, finish off the point early before he recovers to the corner. So 
yeah, you can select the shots depending on the kind of player you are, what your level is, and which situation you are in. It's a lot easier with the forehand to do all of these things because you have a lot more mobility with your arm, you know. So in the forehand, as you can clearly see, it's really much easier to even press the balls down. You can be a lot more aggressive compared to the backhand, you know? One thing you can kind of focus on in the forehand is when you're playing the high ball, try to have the wrist slightly more loose and relaxed than when you have it on the balls, let's say, which are at your waist height, because this will give you a better whipping effect on the higher balls. Personally, I never move back on balls which are on my forehand if they are high. I wouldn't recommend it unless it's like really essential or if you have a very weak forehand so but like you could do the same you could move back and just push the ball in you know like I said I would just recommend with the forehand to always stay close to the line and always try to put like a lot of pressure on your opponent. All right, so those were two options, but then there are times when the ball's landing beyond the no man's land, and those are the moments where you can take advantage of that ball uh, by playing it right off the bounce or playing a drive volley. I'm gonna be playing the first one as off the bounce first and uh, followed by the drive volley. When I was hitting the ball, I hit it in two ways. The first one was with a stiff wrist, and that's for guys who are not using their wrist, who are more playing with their elbows and shoulders, you know, driving the ball through. And the second one was where at the contact, I was flicking my wrist. Now the difference is, you have more precision with the firm wrist, whereas you have more spin, more bouncy ball, with the more wristy option. So it's really up to you what you wanna use and the kind of style you have. If you have a more wristy technique, then right off the bounce, as you make the contact with the ball, you can flick the wrist, making a very compact follow through just by turning the wrist around. And if you have a very, let's say, through the ball technique where you use your, use your shoulders and elbows, then uh, you keep your wrist firm, make sure your racket face is very stable. And uh, in, by stable, I mean like, let's say, pointing very much towards the net cord. And that's gonna guarantee you a good shot with good precision towards where you wanna hit the ball. One more tip I would like to give for the backhand high balls is uh, when you are playing the backhand high ball, let's say you want to try to play the ball at the same height at which it gets into your racket. So let's say if you contacted the ball here and this is the place where you made contact with the ball, you want to send the ball exactly at this height towards the other side of the court. This will help in always maintaining depth on the balls you are hitting. So you just have to kind of picturize this. If you are playing the ball here at this height, just make sure you try to hit it back at the same height where you make contact with the ball. This way, like I said, you will always have good depth on the ball. This is a pretty good tip. If you put your mind to it, you will usually always be able to play the balls back at least deep. Maybe you cannot put a lot of pressure in it unless you are playing at a high level, but at least you will always manage to play it deep on the other side. Hit the ball at the same height at which you got it on your racket.
one last thing is like if you're still after all of this you are not able to run around fast enough you are not able to make contact with the ball on the back and high ball you are not able to move back fast enough if like nothing works out the easiest option is just to slice it back like that is one thing which will always work it's the easiest of strokes open your racket just slice the ball i mean you can even see like you know no matter how high it comes slice is something which is pretty simple it's not so easy for the other guy to actually be like very aggressive unless you have played like a really high slice if you manage to play a decent slice it gives you a lot of time to recover because the slice actually floats through the air and then after the bounce it's actually speeding up you know so it's a very good option we have covered slices in the last video you can look at the videos before just to see what's the right motion to slice where you should make contact with the ball but like i said if none of the tips which we gave just now in the video are helping you out it's always a pretty safe option to actually slice high balls you can see even at the top level it's very like many of the single hand back and players especially like the slightly older ones not the young guys cuz the young guys are still trying to be aggressive but a lot of the older guys are just slicing the ball you know and it works just as well like it's not so easy to constantly attack on a slice unless you are playing someone who's an extremely good player so yeah if nothing works stick to the plain old slice